Hello students, today we'll be learning about scientific theories and laws. Hmm, do you know what those big words are? Do you think there's a difference? Let me explain what each means so that you can understand that they are different. A scientific theory is an explanation of why things work or how things happen. Scientists develop theories based on their observations of the world around them. Theories are based on ideas that can be tested. Theories are not speculative or based on a guess. An example of a scientific theory is theory of relativity. It means that the increased relativistic mass of a body comes from the energy of motion of the body. That is, its kinetic energy divided by the speed of light squared. This can be represented in a formula which is E equals to mc squared. Another example is the theory of evolution, which is the process by which organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioural traits. What then is a scientific law? A scientific law is a statement that describes an observable occurrence in nature that appears to be always true. It is a term used in all of the natural sciences such as astronomy, biology, chemistry and physics, to name a few. But what is an observable occurrence? Well, it's something that can be seen by anyone and happens with no intervention by men. In science, sometimes a law is called a principle. The law or principle may describe only the occurrence, or it may describe the occurrence and predict it as well. However, a law does not make explanations about natural occurrence. An example of scientific law is Newton's law of gravity. Newton could only use this law to predict the behaviour of a dropped object, but he couldn't explain why it happened. Another scientific law is the law of inertia. An object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Think of how sometimes you use a lot of force to get the last few drops of ketchup out of this bottle. That's inertia working in it. Now let's look at the misconception on scientific theories. The first misconception is that experiments are a necessary part of the scientific process. Without an experiment, a study is not rigorous or scientific. Perhaps because the scientific method and popular portrayals of science emphasize experiments, many people think that science can't be done without an experiment. In fact, there are many ways to test almost any scientific idea. Experimentation is only one approach. Another misconception is that scientific ideas are absolute and unchanging. It's true that some scientific ideas are so well established and supported by so many lines of evidence, they are unlikely to be completely overturned. However, even these established ideas are subject to modifications based on new evidence and perspectives. The last misconception is that science can only disapprove ideas. Well, science accepts or rejects ideas based on supporting and refuting evidence and may revise those conclusions if warranted by new evidence or perspectives. How then do you handle these misconceptions? Ask your teacher when you have questions before we move on to the next chapter. This will help you set your mind clear before we deepen our scientific knowledge. Till our next session, work on familiarising yourself with scientific theory and scientific law.